The Time Series Data Management System is a software application that dramatically simplifies the management, analysis, and visualization of time series data. It is optimized to ingest, search, analyze, and visualize big data from nearly any file format and data structure. The application has been designed to be so intuitive you will be analyzing your data and generating reports without any need for training. After installation, search for the Windows Menu Item shortcut labeled TSDMS. This will launch DATUM. The Time Series Data Management System is built on DATUM from National Instruments. As it's initializing, notice that the uh, DATUM application, which consists of several panels, group bars, toolbars, and menus, will be reduced to simply one panel, four toolbars, and four menus. We need to accept the end user license agreement. So you, as you can see, the user interface has been dramatically simplified at this point. It recognizes that no data is on the system, has been imported, so what we're going to do is have it automatically create some raw sample data files for bulk import. Normally it would create 18 ATFX data files. But for video demonstration purposes, this has been truncated to three data files. So the three files have been written, it tells you where they've been written, and it asks if we want to use bulk import to import the files. Right now we're initializing bulk import. <coughs> the first tab in bulk import tells you about organizing your data files. You can bring in multiple files at the same time, but they all must be the same type. So we're going to click next to go to the next thing. So here we're going to choose the source folder where we have all our data files to be imported. So organize your raw data files to be imported into a single folder. By default, since we installed the sample data files, it will point to that folder. Bulk Import has recognized that for this file extension, there are only two available data plugins for that. So the data plugin choices are only two. Either one will work. We're going to click Next. So here's where we're going to parse any metadata from the file name. We'll click a parsing delimiter, and in this case the underscore. And then you immediately see the results of the parsed information from the file name. What this dialog in here is telling you to do is that we need to identify the labels for that metadata. So I'm going to click on this one. This describes the product. So I'm going to call that, prop that property name or metadata product. And I need to assign a data type is going to be text. The next one is implements. This is the tractor and these are different implements that were in the file name. So I'm going to call it implement and set the data type to text. The third one is where we got the date recorded. We don't need that so we're going to just delete that column. The next one is a file name sequence. file sequence. That's a number, so we're going to set the data type to number. And the last one is the DAC device. So we have now completely parsed the metadata from the file names and labeled them as such. Click the next bu button and we will go to folder. So here we've taken the path to the source files and it's been split up. 
so that you can assign any of this metadata to the files. We don't need the first one, so we're going to delete it. And this one is the test location. This is the test type. This is the test year. And the remainder we don't need. And we are finished pulling metadata from the folder path. Now we go to the next section, which is called custom. So here's where you can define custom metadata that will be applied to all the data files. You can define, define your own property names and values up here. When you do this for the first time for a set of data, it will write the data, the information up there, the custom metadata to a JSON file. This file has been already written with these sample data files. So we have latitude and longitude, the source and description already defined. So we don't need to add any more. Click the next button. And the final item is establishing a time zone reference for any date time values in the file. In this case, we're gonna just say we don't know what the time zone offset is and click okay to begin bulk import. So you will see the progress of the importing of the files. What is actually happening is Diodum, uh, a separate instance of Diodum called a parallel process or a worker is being executed to import each data file. This allows the system to handle very large files um, without any problems. And if a import should fail, it doesn't cause the entire import activity to fail just that one file and you would get a report at the end if there was an issue with uh, one or more imports it's an efficient way to process thousands of data files in one batch so bulk import is finished it's automatically done a navigator search based on a import batch hash that's created automatically that identifies these files uniquely during through that import. Note there is also a source file hash. So this is a calculation that's done on the source files based on the content of the source files. And this allows you to uniquely identify each file with a very short-handed small hash and it allows you to identify duplicates and duplicated imported files if you need to. So this concludes the introduction to the time series data management system and the use of bulk import. We are going to exit the time series data management system. What it's done is it has restored the prior configuration to DRDM. So if I run DRDM normally with its normal Windows icon, you will see that the prior data finder configuration, search areas, and everything all exist just as they did before you launched the time series data management system. So it completely manages that. You can run DRDM separately without any influence from the time series data management system application. This tutorial assumes that the prior bulk import tutorial acti activity has been formed on your time series data management system installation. Launch the time series data management system by clicking on the Windows menu icon labeled TSDMS. Whenever you start the application, a search for all imported files will be performed, which is what we see right here. We will perform a search based on the metadata added to the imported data. Note that DATAM calls metadata added to files as properties. To begin a search, choose the menu option Search and Find by Metadata or 
Slim simply click on the toolbar labeled search for data. The dialog named search files by metadata appears. <clears throat> the drop down box property will be populated with the uh, file properties that are optimized on the current data finder. Choose the property name import batch hash. The operator uh, will automatically be assigned to the equal sign, which you can say not equals to as well for text values. Under value, select the hash that's associated with the import set that you're interested in. In this case, we're going to pitch, pitch, pick this one here, which you can see matches the three files that were imported um, ATFX files. Click the Add button, and the search will be updated, and the files that meet that criteria will be shown in the Navigator. You can continue to add more criteria and filter it further, or you can say Done and Quit. If you hit Cancel, the system will return to the search conditions that existed before the dialog was run. If you hit File All, all files will be searched. I'm going to click the Done button. That's the end of this Search by Metadata tutorial. Bulk Analysis Tutorial. This tutorial assumes you have previously performed the Search by Metadata tutorial and the resulting Navigator search results exist. Launch the Bulk Analysis dialog by clicking on the Toolbar button labeled Perform Analysis of All Files or that's my option. Note that that's the, the Bulk Analysis dialog will stay at the top. Three files from the Navigator search results will be included in the analysis to, to be formed. Additionally, the data portal is visible now, and the first file from the search results has been loaded. We're going to select the channel speed, and we're going to drag and drop it into the Y channel control. Observe that the X channel has automatically been detected and assigned as the input channel. Under the Y statistics tab, we're going to click on this button here and choose the, the descriptive statistics to be performed in this file. I'm going to choose minimum, maximum, and mean. To analyze the files, click on the Analyze Three Files button. This will actually add the instructions to the file at first, and then the analysis will be done very quickly. At this point, each of those, those descriptive analysis statistical results have been added to those channels for all three files. The input channels have been cleared. The data portal holds the, the reverse data file again, and we're ready to begin again. In this case, we're going to choose 3D channel, and we're going to drag this Y channel into the Y channel input control. Notice that the X channel and the 20 Z channels have already been detected and assigned because this uh, application recognizes they are 3D channels. Under Z statistics tab, we can choose to calculate the Z maximum and minimum, which we will do. We're going to analyze those three files. We're done performing bulk analysis, so we're just going to close. You can see from this tutorial that you can easily perform statistical analysis of channels across many files with a few dialog inputs. This completes the video tutorial for bulk analysis. Bulk report, single file per page report. This tutorial assumes you have previously performed the search by metadata tutorial and the resulting navigator search results exist. 
It also assumes that the bulk analysis tutorial has been performed calculating descriptive statistics for two channels in every search result or file. We start bulk report by clicking the bulk report toolbar icon. The dialog appears allowing you to choose what type of bulk report application you want to use. You can choose single page per file or data set summary. If you click on down here, there's an example file to give you a visual example of what a single page per file report looks like. In brief, it is basically a chart created from the channels within a single file, one page per report. The other option is the data set summary report. You click on that. What it does is it calculates a statistic from one of the channels from all the files and plots that result to the chart, basically creating a data set summary. We're going to start with a single page per file report. The last report layout is loaded and it's loaded into the report panel. The first file from the search results are loaded into the data portal. This chart has four charts. This report has four charts. Three of them are 2D, one is 3D, and the report object names are listed in this drop-down list. I'm going to click on the first chart, and this chart actually has four curves. I choose the first curve, the Y channel control is enabled, and I'm going to assign a channel to that curve by dragging and dropping it from the data portal to the Y channel control. The X channel is automatically determined. Now this channel has the bulk analysis results available, so I'm going to choose to include in the report the maximum value that was calculated from each file. Make sure to choose the second curve. I'm going to drag and drop the RPM channel into the Y channel control. There's no channel analysis results to be assigned in that case. Third curve, torque. And fourth curve, power. This first chart now has channels assigned to every curve. Next, I'm going to click on the second chart object. And I'm going to open up a different channel group. And I'm going to drag and drop channel there, making an assignment. It's only got one curve. So I'm going to go to the next chart, which is the third one in the bottom left. And I'm going to assign a noise voltage channel to that curve. The last chart in the report is a 3D chart. If I try to drag a 2D channel and assign it to the 3D chart, you'll see that it was not permitted. You're not allowed to make that. It recognizes that that is a 3D chart and needs 3D data. So we're going to go to the data portal and we're going to open up a channel group that has 3D data. Find the Y channel, drag and drop it into the Y control, and it automatically assigns the X channel to the, that control and the 20 Z channels. Now we have Z statistics calculated on that channel. So we're going to click in here and we're going to choose to include the maximum value, column, and row in the report. At this point, all of the charts have assignments in terms of channels. We're going to edit the report labels. The header left is going to be the source file. The footer middle is going to be the page number. For the title, we're just going to call it the New Holland 25S Tractor. And for the subtitle, 2021 Field Test in Arizona. We're going to click Bulk Report Generation. And what it's going to do is first write the instructions to the file to create the report, and then the bulk report will be processed. 
Each file is processed one at a time. The report is generated and then it was exported to a PDF file and each PDF file that is generated is appended to the original. So you have a feed, in this case we have three files and we'll have three page report, one page per file. The application has automatically identified the default PDF viewer for Windows and has launched it and opened up that file that was just created. So now I can browse the file. And notice that uh, the minimum speed is shown here. And for Z statistics, the Z channel maximum value column and row is also shown for each file. This concludes the video tutorial for bulk report, bulk report, data set summary. This tutorial assumes that you have performed a search by metadata, you have a data set with a common set of channels among those file results. Click on the bulk report uh, icon and choose data set summary. The, uh, the default report template will open and a default PDF file will be assigned. The navigator search results have been analyzed and the any channel with statistical results have been listed here. So the channels are on the left and then there's a pipe character and then on the right is the property name for that statistic. So you can see for the channel speed, we have the maximum value, minimum value, and the mean value. I'm going to select the maximum value, and then over to the right, I can choose any of these descriptive statistics to calculate on that maximum value across all the data files. So I'm going to calculate and find the maximum of the maximum. And I'm going to click Add to Report. What this does is it builds the uh, extracts the data from the files and builds it up into the data portal. I'm going to choose one more. I'm going to choose the uh, Z channel maximum and again choose the maximum and say add to report. So now we've got two statistical results that we're going to summarize from all the data files. I click the edit report labels. And here you can sign anything you want to the labels. Note that the title, the subtitle, and the comments left are already going to be assigned by the report. So I'm going to simply add a page number to the report in the footer middle. Hit the start report, bulk report generation. And your report is very quickly generated. Uh, the default PDF viewer is loaded and the file that was created is loaded. So for page one, we've got the speed channel. We've got the maximum value for th from three files that are plotted. And down here in the x-axis is what's called the source file hash. It's a hash of the contents of the file and it uniquely identifies each file. And if you look at the last page, there's an index showing the association between each source file hash and the full file name. The hash is used because it's uh, more compact and easier to manage in terms of an x-axis label. For the second chart, we chose the Z channel statistic maximum. And you can see that the maximum from the three files occurs in the third file, this one specifically. And we can identify that file right here. And that's the full file name. So in just a few steps, we were able to extract the maximum value for the speed channel and for the 3D Z channel from all the files. In this case, it was only three files. It could just as easily been 3,000 files. And you would be able to quickly find that statistic across the files. This concludes the online tutorial for bulk report data set summary.